Bernie, it's a pleasure to be here again. Welcome back. You're very Shea welcome. Marsden. Marsden. You're very welcome. Casa, Marsden, Casa Marsden, whatever they say in Spain. They do um, say that, yeah. And uh, it is always a joy for me to, to, to play some of your old guitars, talk about um, some of the stories behind them. But uh, this time round, uh, you've... Uh, very helpfully decided to write me a, a, a sort of an encyclopedia of them all so that I don't even have <laughs> now, to... Now you can have them all in, in your hands at one time. Yeah. So, I mean, if you guys hopefully can see this, this is, uh, this is a tomb. This isn't even a book, is it? No. Tomb? Tome? One of the two. Tome. Tome. Yeah. yeah, is it a tome? Um, don't say tomb. Yeah, don't say tomb. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, I, when I heard about the book, and obviously it's been a you know, a year or two in the making. Uh, and we sort of said, look, we must come up and take a look at it and, and you know, look at some pictures of, of guitars and then, and then play the actual guitar. And, but tell me, tell me a little bit about the book and how, how it came about. A couple of years ago, um, a friend of mine in, in, in the book business, uh, we talked about it and he, every time he came over, he, over here, as you well know, he's so another guitar. He's not a guitar player, but he likes, you know, he's a music fan. And he'd say, just how many guitars have you got? And I said, well, I don't actually know. And I wasn't being facetious. I was trying, I was, I was being honest. And he said, how do you mean, how, how could you say you don't know how many guitars you've got? I said, well, I don't, you know, because a lot, so many are locked away and so many are, and then some are loaned out and la -da -da. So we got talking about it and uh, he said, uh, well, we should do something with them, you know, put it, put them all together. And I honestly thought we might we'd do a calendar, <laughs> and the the a twelve guitarist magazine the, the, yeah, calendar, the yeah. twelve month calendar has turned into a like, best part of a four hundred page. Uh, it's pretty epic. The, the one you're looking at, Lee, is uh, this is the binder's proof. So that's why there's no there's no title oh, on the I cover. See. Right. So this was sent to me just to check through, and it, I was happy with. I mean, it's such a. It was so enlightening. You know. I mean, we'd done the other book before. But that, that's a, that's a biography, autobiography, yeah, yeah. and this is a different. You know, this is this is your stepping up from your Hofner very thin to to your first, uh, you know, big guitar kind uh, of thing. No offense to anybody who loves Hofner very. Oh, it's it's a. I mean, I, I I had a flick through. I mean, I it, I said I almost feel it's such a beautiful book that I quite like the fact that the copy we've got here has been slightly more thumbed, and I yeah. don't feel sort of bad opening it. Yeah. But the I mean the first thing. And again, I think this is where we'll have some fun. The index alone, <laughs> it, you know, there's three pages with 30 odd guitars per page, maybe more. And you're literally just going, is there three pages or four? Three pages. Three, yeah. And you're just sort of going like, oh my God. And, and, and that one from there, you know, it's, it's like, it's mm. mad. Uh, so definitely, definitely going to play a bit. There's a beautiful forward from, you know, dozen or so yeah, amazing Steve, Steve other guitar Steve did, did a... a very well you know he's one of my heroes we've been friends for a long time but you know you expect to you know you know what he's like he's always you know putting himself down you know yes and he wrote these lovely things and uh, he's just a good guy but all the guys that came in and put ian anderson's is so ian anderson he wrote a lovely piece it's uh it's just so cool anyway that's it but there's lots of people to read that it's stuff, right? it's and what i like about this is the the, the photography is I don't even know if you, if you want to give away the photographer's secrets about how he sort of did the photography. Because mm. I was looking at them and some of the close-ups, I'm like, this looks like you've taken it with a, with a microscope. Mm. You, tell us a bit about how... He the did... Um, the, guy, the guy's name is Melvin May. And uh, he came over to, over, over to the house. He blacked out a room here. And he, he did this uh, with a, a process which photographers will recognise. I didn't know anything about it. They call it uh, light painting. And it was in a darkened room with a, a long exposure. And with an assistant, he was, or him, sometimes himself, and how he quite did that still amazes me. Um, the, the, the room is totally blacked out. And then with a sharp, bright torch, and I mean a bright one, uh, he would literally do this and paint the guitar whilst the exposure was being made. And this is what you end up with. It's... After a lot of other processing, you know, but without you know, like anything, without the the, the basic ingredients, you can't do much yeah. with it. I mean, for instance, I mean, the gold top there is just 
you know. And it's, then, it's, it's like having the guitar in your house, isn't it? it? And then there's a beautiful story to go with each one about the, yep. you know, the, the background to the guitar and how you came about it and any other famous artists or songs that, that, that the uh, guitars yep. appeared on. But you know what? I think, you know, half the fun here for me is going, we might as well, we're on page one here. Why don't, we ta why, why don't we just take a look at the double neck? The, uh, what, what, what was the significance behind putting this on? Well, I put this one in one? F first, uh, A, because a, a twin neck guitar, is, even these days, is still pretty, you know, is it impressive, is that the word? You know, it's a new, they're still yeah. unusual, aren't they? And this is very, this is a famous one. This is the one I used all the way through White Snake. And this is the one I played, you know, Ain't Gonna Cry No More on every night. And, I still use it occasionally, not not that often, but when I obviously if I do that song, and people know what's coming, and the guitar gets a, a bigger, if uh, big, if not bigger cheer than I do <laughs> when it's carried out because they know what's coming and they just. You know, but the sound of it is still uh, just quite well, st quite stunning. But Gibson gave me that, made that for me in 1976 before White Snake. That was I was with Pace Ashton Lord. Let, and, let's um, grab it and then you can tell out. us a little bit about. Let's it. Let's have a look so. at it. <laughs> Really good. So what you were when you first got this though, it didn't look like this. You were telling me before. No, they were very. There was a a, a, a great guy when I was. Um, I, was I must have been what, 20, 25, 20, maybe maybe twenty four, and there was a, a guy called Dave Roberts, and uh, he's still around. I, well, hopefully, I think he lives in Australia these days. But he worked. He was the guy on the street in those days, around Tottenham Court Road and Denmark Street, and he had worked for Fender and Gibson, and I think. Uh, I think Gretsch as well. I mean, he was the guitar guy, and he was the guy that was in and out of those famous stores in those days at Top Gear and yeah. Guitar Village, and and he would come in, and or they would, the staff would kind of say, "Oh, there's this kid comes in. He's he's from Oxford, or he's from whatever, you know, he's from Manchester. And he's we think he's up and coming." They, and they would kind of, and then the next time you go in, Dave would be there, and then this was so it was after Wild Turkey and into Cozy Powell's band, so I was I was doing okay. Yeah. And then he just came out and said, uh, "Would you, uh, you know, would you fancy an endorsement deal with with Gibson?" And I didn't really know what that meant. And uh, they said, "Is there anything you really want?" And I said, "Well, I've got this, and I've got I've got a Les. I had I had the Beast then, and I've got a couple of more." I said, "Oh, not really, no." I said, "One thing I could do with, and I just got the gig with Pace Ashton Lord, and um, I said well, I could do with a twin neck guitar, but I don't think you make them anymore." And he said, "Oh, leave that with me." And it wasn't that long after that. I got the phone call and uh, this showed up, but it was walnut. Yeah, so and, like um, the, the browner colour. Yeah, and you know, it was, it, what do you do when you know somebody lays the one, this this thing on you and go, oh, you know, oh, I wish it was red, you know. And uh, so I got I got it done by a guy called Dick Knight, who very was very famous, famous yeah. and a very very nice, charming guy. I mean, I, <laughs> old guy. I was going to say he's probably younger than I am now, but. He did that, and he put he put my name in in this nice. Uh, I said that to you when I saw yeah, it. I love the yeah, font of it. Yeah, it's the like font. A Triumph motorcycle yeah. kind of font, isn't it? it? Looks great. So I did that, and and he then un, unknown to me. I was well, no, I didn't ask him to, but he, he put these crowns in as well cool. to match up because I think he felt that that it needed them, and uh, so I've left everything else more or the same. The, the I didn't bother changing anything else. Uh, I put these on. These these are. And, and it was in a presumably a darker cherry. It was yeah, it was in a yeah, it was in a yeah, it was fairly red. It was fairly red when it came back, and uh, I just liked it, and uh, it became uh, what what it is. You can see how much the fade now is on. Oh it's wow! Going on the neck now. Yeah, fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, so that's probably more its original colour down yeah. here. And, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I guess if I used it a lot more, it, it might come back. To, it might end up coming back brown again. I don't know. I don't think so. And but, I know, I'm sure the book will tell us, but so where did this, you know, what tracks was this guitar, you know, well, this was, this synonymous went, with? This, the first thing I did with White Snake with this was uh, we did Ain't, Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City. And in the original film, they, this is in that. But I think, it, I think, I'm not, some, somebody will tell me, but I think it's still brown. 
Right. And that, I think that was in between Dick getting it and... Uh, so it probably wouldn't have your name on it then. It probably hasn't got my name in, no. Yeah. I'm not sure. Somebody, will, No doubt somebody will yeah. find out now and we'll, we'll know. But uh, those, those, those days are a little cloudy. <laughs> but I, remember, I do remember, but Dick, I remember, was great. Dave Roberts, I have to give a name check to because he was very... You know, and then of course he was uh, people slapping him on the back a year and a half later because White Snake was doing really well and Dave was a hero. So you know, yeah. he then went to Yamaha and I, I actually did did some stuff with Yamaha for. A, a, he came back from Yamaha with a list of people they wanted, and he said, "Guess who's top of the list?" And I said, oh, "Brian May." You know, he said, uh, "No, he said you are." So I said, "Okay." So he'd done me a big favour, and my Gibson thing had kind of finished at that point. I, and yeah. So I had a little while with Yamaha, but they, funny enough, they talked at the time about a signature guitar, but uh, that never happened, and I didn't think. Uh, it would, but uh, I was wrong, wasn't I? Yes, you yeah. certainly were. Yeah, yeah. Um, I Hold on to that for a second, but I, okay. I think I, I'm enjoying this game. Imagine like a game of, of like the best possible pin the tail on the donkey <laughs> game that you could ever have as a guitar player. This, this is basically, this is, this is what... Uh, so I quite fancy now checking out... You know what? I know I'm not going to literally go through the whole thing. Okay. But the second one for me is... I don't think I've ever played one, but it's a it's a original fifty two Les Paul with the the, the, the original tailpiece on it. That I don't think I've ever. So any chance we could? Uh... Well, there you shall play one. Oh, you're a very kind man. <laughs> Around yeah, this, much it? more stratty yeah. sort yeah. of single coil tone out there. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about. I mean, I've never seen this before, but but this has got um, Les Paul scratched onto onto mm. the scratch plan. There's a great picture of it here, like you know, real zoomed in. But what's the story behind that? I bought this from a guitar dealer in America uh, quite a long, quite a while back now, a good friend of mine, Jim Singleton. And uh, he was on the road uh, with, with a pal of his, and he was with Danny Gatton. And they ran into to Les Paul. Uh, I, I, it's written down, you can, I've left the documents in the book. Yeah, yeah, oh, um, I see, yeah. Uh, so, I can't remember where it was, but they were all together. And Les was in good, good, good voice, good mood. And they, he said, we have a Les Paul in the car. Would you sign it? And he said, yeah, bring it out. And he played it. Apparently, and Jim said he really thought this was a great guitar. And he loved it because it was totally original. And he said, people messed with them. They took this off, you know, and everything like this, which most people have, you know. I, it is awkward, just to digress. These things are, but you just have to get used to it, yeah. you know. You know, just you know, get over it kind of thing. And... Uh, they said, "Would you sign the guitar for us?" And you know, he knew he knew Dan, Danny Gap, obviously. Um, and he pulled a nail out of his pocket and scratched it in here, and, and then said to them, "Can, can you see it in yeah, there?" Yeah, completely. You yeah. can see it in the book. And they said, uh, while he was doing it, they said, uh, "He said that's, that's a genuine Les Paul signature." He said, and "If it, if you find one that isn't like this, in, if it's a pen, so like a pen, in, or like a sharpie or something, yeah." yeah. I said, the "Chances are, I said it ain't me." <laughs> that's crazy and he said he was it? in a really good mood and he played the guitar for some time and uh, they bunged it back in the case and um, it's ended up uh, here and uh, I, it's it's such a good guitar I mean there's a a CD comes with this book and, oh, I, cool. and I use I use this on I think at least two or three tracks on it and it, it sounds just terrific you know it's may, got that Freddie I? King vibe yeah. may I give it a I shall pass a it twirl. over to the captain I oh. present you with. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it, it's it's such an iconic look. Mm. But you're so right. I mean, it, for a, you've got it. I guess. Can you make it? Can you play with your hand? Do you play with your hand behind there, or just? just I, I you know, not you, just, any way you like. Just don't don't fix yourself on anything. Was the was the poker chip a, 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 an no, addition later? Yeah, later. Oh right. Yeah. So you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
it's a P, P90s are just like that. I can see why people take these off. <laughs> Yeah, but it, you've, it, you've only had it for. I've a, had it a two minute. minutes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but that said, it's so unusual. Uh, I, th I think if I've seen these before, a hundred percent, they're either ones that have had the yeah. bridge yeah. put in and then they've someone's Converted. restored it back, yeah. Yeah. or they've just never bothered to convert it back and stayed with the tunematic or a wraparound on it. But I, I've I've never had any uh, desire to to change anything on it. You know, I don't, if if I play it, I play it for one or two songs and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and in the studio, and you soon get used to it, you know. Uh, if it was on the road, maybe I might, I might change. This this one isn't a, a first edition because the the first ones, where where the pickups are being held in by these screws, mm -hmm. the very first ones were diagonal. They right. Across. So this, the, but this is a fifty-two. But the skinny frets, aren't they? Was yeah. That so yeah. And it, presumably this must have had a refret because there's there's just. I mean, you've never seen. You have you have to buy the yeah. book, won't they, yeah, to yeah. see the close-ups on this? But yeah. the the fret board wear. Yeah. I mean, I think if this had been a a, a, a Fender laminate fretboard, you'd have gone through the fretboard, through, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, you'd have yeah. been through to the actual neck. Yeah, it plays but, great. No. But I think on that's one of the things on Gibsons. They've always had thick yeah. fretboards, haven't they? Yeah. So it can sort of take the wear. But yeah, you don't really whether it's been feel I, I I really don't know. The guy Jim, when I bought it from Jim, I, he he didn't think it had been refretted. Really? Yeah, yeah. He just didn't think it'd been played that much. And yet, the the like you say, the indentations here. Oh, well, that could have been just a heavy handed something that could have happened to it. But there, there, there's a lot of play in there, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, without being vulgar, and I know the Beast is probably. The most valuable in the collection for its the exposure it for its notoriety. No, no, no no yeah, 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 but I mean, presumably there can't be many fifty-two Les Pauls in this condition signed by Les Paul around. Can no, they? I don't think so. No, no, I think so. I think I, I mean, I was conscious of getting the, all the all the pieces were there for this was great condition. The case yeah. was there, everything, and he, Jim said to me, "Look, if you're gonna if you're gonna have one, this is the one. You know, don't let this one go out the door. You know, kind of thing." And it hadn't been on the wall of his shop. He just it had come in, in a, on a consignment, and uh, I just said, "Yep, yeah, I'll, I'll take it." And um, I haven't. Uh, it's never really seen the light of day. And uh, and no serial number. No serial number. No. Just I, my, my theory. I might be wrong on this. Somebody out there on, on the, the great worldwide know all web will know. And uh, but I, my theory is they made these because Fender were doing so well with the with the, what was the Esquire and the Telecaster. That Gibson wanted to make a solid guitar, but I got a feeling they never thought it would work, and so they didn't bother putting serial numbers on them. I don't know. Bit of a theory, really. It's but just, why hasn't it got a serial number? I and none no of them idea. do, the 52s. It's, 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 yeah, there'll be a story somewhere. Maybe they but... thought it was a fad and it would all be over with, you know, in, in, in six months or something. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe the serial numbers inside. But when you but... hear that, can't you understand why all those blues people use these? Sister Rosetta Tharp, John Lee Hooker, Muddy Waters. Yeah. It's endless. Hubert Sumlin, they all use these guitars. And it, it's, it can't be a coincidence, can it? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a, this is why I love coming to your house, basically. It's just, like, <laughs> it's just, it's just guitar porn, isn't it, basically? So, uh, anyway, let's get the book back. Get the book back. So, when did, um, you know, being a guitar player and owning a few guitars turn into a guitar collecting obsession for you? Well, by default, really. I, I mean, touring a lot in America um, gave me the opportunity to, uh, well, let's say touring a lot, touring America, get, always in those in the old days, gave the opportunity to buy guitars at relatively, you know, nothing prices. Compared to today. Yeah, yeah. and I was lucky. When I was in uh, UFO and I first moved to London, I we lived in a... I had a, a bed sit in Shepherd's Bush, and to my delight, in a couple of two or three days after I've looking out the window, this red uh, uh, what was the what was the um, Ford Mustang showed up, and a bloke who looked just like Mick Ralphs from Mott the Hoople got out of it, and I realised that is Mick Ralphs from Mott <laughs> the Hoople, and they were always on. So Mick lived in the bottom flat in the basement because you know he was uh, in the big place, and of course immediately we. You know, became friends, and um, he was on the road all the time in those days. In a, in he was backwards and forwards to America all the time, and he would come back with all these guitars. A bit, bit of a legend, Mick. And he would say, oh, 
you want to get involved in, you know, you go over there and when you buy this, I'll give you the name of the shop in Texas or whatever, somewhere in Lubbock, some small town, you know, say that I, I was in there and you, you know, you'll get another $5 off or something like that. And he, he was fantastic. And I realized then that, that he, he was a bit of a tinkerer with guitars. He, you know, he'd say, oh, I think I'll, I like the pickup on this Telecaster. I'll take it off of this Telecaster and I'll put it on this other. But they're his guitars. He can do what he likes with them, can't he, really? But he was very influential on me to be, become a kind of guitar aware. I think that's right. nice. And it turns in, in, into this. But he, he had a, you know, he has or had an amazing collection of guitars. And, right. Uh, so he was one of the guys who made me, and then of course hanging out in the West End at, at, the, at yeah. the guitar emporiums. I mean, I, I've said it to you before, you know, in, in the old days there was no such thing as vintage guitars. You either had a new guitar or you had a second hand guitar. So it was always easy to go out and find other stuff. And then, the pro I mean, I remember seeing Les Pauls in uh, a shop called Pan Music. I think it was Spencer Davis's Les Paul. Okay. And it was 225 quid which was just not so much like, I just couldn't afford it. Yeah. You know, there was so much money at the time, but it was, and Orange was the famous place for the vintage. They were the first. Oh, really? Clips? I, I, yeah. They were, they were really the first, almost only second-hand dealers. Right. And they, they was, you know, I got my first Les Paul SG from there, the, 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 the one that Gary Moore used. Right. Uh, which is still around. And you, you mentioned as well that the, the this idea of, when did you cotton on to this idea that if you could bring three guitars back from the States, mm. the chances were you could flog two of them and that would pay for the Yeah, the third well, that, one. That, that was it. If you could spend your, you know, save up your per diems and you could save up a bit of whatever money you had and find a guitar that was. Sorry, did you just get that? Stomach just says ginger beer, isn't it? Um, no, you would, you would go out and do um, your, your trips and stuff and buy one for $60, thinking, well, I can, I can probably get 120 quid for that. And you'd buy three if you had the money, or if you could borrow the money off of somebody yeah. in the band. If uh, by the time we were there, there were some other richer people in the band, and um, take the three back and sell two to subsidise the one you want to keep. So for every one that's in here, yeah. there could have been. I mean, I could have been. I mean, it, if I'd have had the money at the time to keep them, there would have been three. So that's why. You know, and I suppose, you know, you, you go from uh, a collection the size of my collection to somebody like David Gilmour, who had the money at the time, you know, to buy a few more and not have to sell them, you know, which is which is great. Has that, Good for um, Dave. Has that sale happened yet? It hasn't No, I don't yet, think so, no. Know. That'll be very interesting. Yeah. It's going to be sort of charity, isn't it? It's going to be a charity is sale. Is it charity I'm as so, well? so I was told, yeah. Because they've undervalued, not undervalued, but the reserves on some of them are so low. Really? Well... I mean, his the 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 black the strap, famous strap from, yeah. from Dark Side of the Moon. What's they've got thing? a reserve on that of a hundred thousand pounds. You just think it's going to go for no, five or ten no, times it's that, a, isn't it's it? A, it's a come and get me. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, yeah. yeah I, I but there's uh, yeah. I wonder. So that's I, what we did, you know. And, yeah. and I wasn't alone in that. It was, you know, and and of course the guys in the West End, they, they'd love it because you, you know, you you spend three weeks, four weeks, five weeks in America, you'd come back and you'd walk into Top Gear and say, you their number one do, you want to, do, you want to, do you want to buy this? You know, would you buy that? And they go, oh, would you pay for that then? You know, you none know, of your business. None of your business. You know, what do you give me for it? <laughs> yeah. But it would, it, suddenly, as soon as you made a profit on it, you thought, well, I, I, so then you'd, you'd sell two Les Paul Juniors yeah. in order to keep a 335 or something. And, um, was was or vice versa? Can you can you can you remember one or think of one where you go bugger? We should never sold that one, or is or are there loads? Or yeah, I sold a I sold a Gretsch uh, rock jet, right? And I had a Gretsch Firebird, which had a stand in the back, a guitar that uh, not his guitar, but Muddy Waters used one. And well, like a thing, it had a, it, to... yeah, it came out the back of the guitar. I mean, there Very there was practical. amazing for its time, yeah. <laughs> and I used that for a while. I, I but I sold the. The, the rock jet, which that's one I should have, you know, but that, that I was offered instantly, I think, uh, double the money that I'd paid for it. And, you know, I mean, I was making, I don't know, what, 15, 20 quid a week at the time. Yeah. And it was like, suddenly you had three months money in your hand and you it just, and I thought, am I going to play this very much? And you thought, nah, probably not. So that was one that went out. Uh, I'd, I'd let a 335 go, which was really good. The I did let a, uh, a rather famous Les Paul go, but I think we've gone through that before, haven't we? Well, yeah, I think there's... But I did, uh, keep, I did keep another That's in one. fairness, yes, you, you, yeah. you've got a different famous one. Um, there is an acoustic guitar on here I fancy seeing, and my eye has lost it now, but uh, here it is. This uh, European origin Martin Coletti. 
mm. covered in what I assume is people's signatures. It is. Can we can we see that? We can see that one. Well, let's have a look. Let's get it. <laughs> so this came. This is a. I think what would in the old days have been called an East German, maybe in that area. Right. Okay. Nobody really knows. Uh, there's a lot of conjecture about Martin Coletti's, because uh, European, but obviously based on, you know, but there was a guy called Martin Coletti, okay. and. and uh, but they, they've they've just got the sound. Got this, this but so you bought this? This isn't like a guitar that you learned to play on or something. No, this no. A this this ca- but it point. is a local guitar. I, there was a, a fellow um, played guitar, and I'm I'm from from Buckingham, and there was a fellow who made. Uh, he was like a leather worker, right? But he was a he was a you know amateur guitar player, and this was his guitar. And this is 1920 or something. And he bought this, I think, around about 1930s, something like that. And um, he he played it all the time until he he had acquired he, he then acquired a, a Gibson uh, Roy Smeck, right? Which I have as well. So um, it just. Um, but when I played this thing, I just thought it was. So you, when I got it, you have to stand by the crossroads and yeah, it's one of know, those. Thing about how she broke your heart. And so not long guitar. after I I got it, this fella, yeah, here, <laughs> a fantastic, uh, and he was a fairly young man when I met him. He was only eighty three, right? And his name was David Edwards, right? Honey Boy Edwards, and I took this to his gig, and he was eighty three, and he's not well known really. He is more well known these days because he's in a lot of those uh, blues documentaries they made. But he played with Robert Johnson, and right. I wanted to meet and um, see the guy who had played with Robert Johnson. I took this down for him to sign. Yeah, and he was so good and so sweet, and we became good friends. And I wanted him to sign this, and he signed it in with great detail. And he, after, and I watched him sign it. And when he signed it, he held it up, looked at it, and looked at me, and said. And he called me Danny, but that's another story. He said, hey, Danny, he said, that's my name. And I was like, <laughs> that's pretty cool. So after he had played, and he was first, and I've got a picture of just the guitar, of him with the guitar, with just his name on it, to show that that's what happened. Yeah. <clears throat> Not long after I was going to a festival, I think it was in Norway, and this fellow was there playing, Mr. Moore, and I said, look, Honey Boy Edwards signed this guitar for me. And he played with Robert Johnson. He said, well, I'll sign it. I didn't even ask him to sign it. He said, I'll sign it. And he did. And I said, oh, well, why don't you take up a bit more space, Gary? <laughs> but I'm so glad he did now. So after that, I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool for me to get all the players, Everyone. you know, as many. The idea was to get blues players. But yeah. once Gary, had, I mean, he was a great blues player. But I was, yeah. was going to try and concentrate on, on you know, Mississippi, right. American guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, that was kind of maybe... Closing up too many doors, yeah. And I, and I wanted to get, uh, you know, the people I admired on it. You know, players that have done something special, and pe- you know, pe- people that do, do something original and, and were the originators and stuff. Oh my word! So, Slash. Yeah. Billy Gibbons. Billy Gibbons. I mean, again, I'm only doing the ones that I can actually recognise. Yeah. Walter Trout's on there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Johnny Winter. <laughs> Paul Jones. I'm guessing this is a family connection down here, is it? That's my daughter, Charlotte, <laughs> yeah, I thought aged it was. Well, so it was 1996, so she was seven years old. <laughs> and so she came home from school and she decided to put her name on there. And uh, so I've left left that on. Uh, who else so, is on? Oh, Ricky brilliant. Medlock's on there, who's a good old friend of mine. Is that Warren Hayes? Warren. Uh, Glenn Campbell. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's stuff on the back as well? Yeah, there? yeah. And on the side? On the side, oh, obviously you got that's we got, oh my that's gosh, the most loose. recent one, Van Morrison. <laughs> that was about three, that was about a month ago. Oh, that was the new G. Yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. When it? I called yeah, you, yeah yeah yeah, 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 back in January, and uh, he was great. And who else? We got Bobby Rush, uh, blues man, uh, who was there. Uh, this one, 
Who's this? God's own instrument. That's Robbie McIntosh. Robbie Mac. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Rob, what, what a treasure Robbie McIntosh is, you know. Oh, I you, you. know, what a, what, a, what, a, what, a, yeah. what a slide guitar player. What a, oh, is it much know. easier for me to read down the side here? Wayne, yeah. Wayne Kramer. Wayne Kramer. I mean, he signed that. I took it. Jack uh, Bruce. Jack. Robert yeah. Crave. Yeah, oh goodness, Martin mate. Barr. There's some guy in there, Ben Tony, and Arston. I never heard of him. Yeah, yeah, there, so. some, he's on there somewhere, yeah. <laughs> Paul Reed Smith wouldn't sign it unless I did, so. <laughs> Elvin Young, Bloodheart. Oh, so, man, that's it's, cool. It's become what it's Steve Morse. It's yeah. Just, I've got it inside the case. There's a, I keep a, uh, like a piece of paper uh, with, with a, like a facsimile of it. Yeah. So I know, you forget, you know, sometimes they're... they're Bonamassa's quite hard to... Oh, to, is he on there? He's on here Oh, somewhere. Kebmo? Yeah, Kebmo, yeah. yep. Oh, Joe's so... down, there's Joe. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, you can just about see Bonamassa, yeah, that's, can't you? I think you? that's Lukather. Oh, is it? That yeah, like that's Slash. Luke. Yeah, no, no, Slash, Slash is... He's on the list. He's on the list, He's on he? the list. If you're out there, Slash... Oh, yes, yeah, so, oh, actually... You need to sign this. <laughs> no, it's, it's great. Peter Green. Oh, yeah, just throw his name in, shall I? Mick Taylor's on here. So there's one... There's a couple of big... Uh, gaps at the moment. I mean, this, uh... I'd, love, I'd love to meet Peter Green. I, told, I think I told you before. My dad went to school with him, and the and the the band that my dad plays drums. Yeah. And the band that they had when they were like fourteen years old was my dad on drums and Peter called? Green. I mean, it would have been a school band, whatever. But, but I was I was with Peter last week. Were you really? Yeah. Are we digressing here. Well, I, I mean, I I've again. I've no idea what 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 uh, Peter's uh, recollection of that, but Peter Anderton. I mean, I, I don't know where the school was yeah. somewhere in in you know southwest London or something. Like I'll that. ask him. Yeah, well, but, well um, Bethel Green and yeah. Randwood. and then yeah, my I'll ask that him. Was, uh, so yeah, when they were in their teens, that was uh, that was the band. I love so. the way Billy Gibbons did that. Put his little logo in there. It's brilliant. It's great. Absolutely brilliant. It, it, this is uh, Larry Johnson, a guy. I did the, yeah, the I'm blues not too with. familiar with him. No, this is John Jackson. Uh, two sadly, yeah. no longer. So Honey Boy, John. Uh, there's John Miller here, who's a fantastic guitar player. Yeah. I mean, what, and like this, this. I forget, <laughs> I forget myself, don't I? It's brilliant. Bill Wyman's better than an autograph book. Bill isn't it? Wyman's on here. Is somewhere. he? Yeah, Bill Wyman's on here. Yeah. Good for yeah. him. Yeah, I mean, it's Bill. Bill signed it because he'd signed it. Right. Yeah, you know, it's right. kind of like you know, we say, "Honey boy, yeah." Brilliant. Who is? But it's real good. It's really. I, I, Tony Hicks, one of my heroes. But Tony wrote, "Time for a new one." <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bob good. Harris. Is that whispering, Bob Harris? Yes. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just brilliant. Dave, Dave Clemson. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Dave Kelly is on. Oh, Eric Bibb. Eric Bibb, yeah, yeah. Eric, Eric did that. that he was, was at G Live that, as well. That was the same bill, same, wasn't it? Same in, night, yeah. Van Morrison, yeah. Yeah, he was a fine player. I'm on the uh, Bonamassa cruise with, with Eric. In, Are you? In, in August, yeah. Doing the blues cruise? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, and uh, Peter Frampton, Joe, uh, obviously. Uh, Robert Randolph, I think, is on. John Shaw Taylor. Uh, it's going to be good. It it's will be, be good. good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, are you taking the family? Or are you just having yeah, a they are actually, week they, on yeah, your no, own? No, they, they are actually, you know, we're going to have, so it's... Uh, Barcelona to Monaco to Valletta in Malta. Oh, it's a, a Mediterranean cruise. Yeah. It's not the, not no, the Flower at no, Florida they, Keys one. Or no, they it? just did that one. I, right. I did the first one of those. I'm looking forward to the European one. It's going to oh, be, good for gonna you, be nice. Yeah. So that's... Uh, well, there'll be a few people that see this video. I'm that's sure a bit collectible, that. that one, isn't oh, it? Oh, slightly. Slightly. Uh, anyway. All right, let's, so let's we, pop we this press one on. So we've got yes, one let's press on. Back in the case. <laughs> There's a super cool Firebird one here, which I vaguely... I don't think I've ever actually played a single pickup Firebird before. I think I think Joe Bonamassa had a like a, did an Epiphone like yeah, reissue the, the, of a, they, sing, they did a, a single. did what did they call it? The Bonnerbird. Well, yeah, Bonnerbird. Uh, uh, Bonnerbird. Uh, yeah. Lots of the Les Pauls with the Firebird. Headstock, um, yeah. But that uh, is that. Um, this is a nineteen sixty four one. Oh man, sixty four. That's I've always been a. Yeah. Can we can we have a, a noodle on on that? Yeah, this, this is I haven't had this one very very long. Oh, um, okay. This is, is fairly new acqu acquisition. So Just in time for the book. You're actually. still shopping then, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bad it's, it's a bug, disease. One, it's isn't a it? chronic disease. You, <laughs> you you can control it, but you can't get rid of it. <laughs> much about the, the, the firebird one is the one purely because of the one pickup or is it because it was the first uh, the, incarnation this, of a this firebird? came out in 63 right and um i mean they're still pretty outrageous now aren't they no it's a wicked looking guitar i the reason i i've i've had quite a lot of firebirds over the years and i had another firebird one which i should have kept really but 
<clears throat> I was made an offer I literally couldn't refuse for it, <laughs> uh, which included um, other guitars to come in. <clears throat> and I didn't play it very much. But the moment it had gone, I, I thought, you know, I should have kept that. So I've been looking out for another one for a while. Of course, they've, they've you know, gone up hugely in value and stuff. And probably my fault for selling the other one. And um, this one came up only last year. And the one pickup version was the beginners, you know. They right. went, so they went from this one to the Firebird 3 with dots, Firebird 5 with crowns, and the big all singing, all dancing 7 which was unattainable really, because yeah. when they came out. But when I was about 14 or 13, maybe, I, I don't know, I was in Selma's in London, the famous shop, and the Mer Mersey Beats were in there. Right. And they were real pop stars, you know, and I was, you know, hanging out. I'm, I'm, I was 12, but it'd be 64 or something, 65. And I'm hanging out, so I'm just a kid. But they were really sweet and really, you know, really nice to me and stuff. But they were in the shop to pick up their new Firebirds. So I can remember them as if it was yesterday, these opening the cases and these things coming out. And they, they didn't have a one pit. They had a, a Firebird 5 and a Firebird 3. And Johnny Gustafsson, who went to Roxy Music and loads of other people, he was in the Mersey Beats, and he had a Thunderbird pace. Right. So this was etched into my young mind, you know, that, that this is one of the guitars I'm going to have when I'm older. And when I joined UFO, I had one which had been messed around with, and it had a P90 here. And somebody had put a humbucking pickup in here. But these are, these are very toppy. Eric Clapton used one of these with cream. And I think he always used with the tone off. Right. Because they are pretty, you, you can hear, they're, they're very, they're very much, there's not much roundness in it. But if you I've take that off, it's like. That. If you imagine that it's wound up. It's very yeah. kind of thing, doesn't it? Yeah. Back on. It's nice. But what's, and what's the story here? Presume, is this not original then, or is yeah, this it's all original? So this would, modded this it would have had a vibrola on it. They came right. with they came with the, the Gibson vibrola. Uh, this one's they, they, they were a bit of a pain. The, yeah. the other firebird I've got has got one on. So that would have been mounted here and on the end pin or something, would it? In, it in that, big... I can show you. We can get the other one out. You can see the difference if you like. We so well. we'll we'll do that. But whoever ta they've taken it off, which is not a bad thing. But uh, so you can see what it was, and I can show you on the other let's one. Grab, let's grab the other one. The other one yeah. uh... But this is really, this is 60, 63 or 4. I think they didn't put the red firebird on the very first one, so I think that makes this one a 64. I see what you're saying now about the, the threat. I, I, in my mind, I had the, the one with, with yeah, the big cover straight. there. But yeah. um, this, is, this, the... this, this is the cheap one. You'll, you'll remember this, but what was, who had the original design where vibrato was that way, not? that way somebody oh. somebody designed a trem system where it literally was you did that and I, i'm trying to think if it was gibson or or no, gretch it was, or it was gretch i think I can't, where you yeah. did that mm -mm. yeah so you, yeah. you you went up and down like that but it was some way connected so that it still made the the, the strings rock backwards and forwards but oh sorry i've got you on oh. but then you can get the nice Firebird player then ever Johnny Johnny Winter, yeah. We were listening to uh, oh, I oh, know so not yeah. That, this is where I get confused. We were listening to Edgar Winter the other day, uh, but yeah. So was that Rick Derringer? What was the tune we were listening to? The Edgar Winter tune. Uh, oh, that one. That is it. I'm just going. What a great riff. Was he, was a he long a time since I played that. Was he a Firebird guy or no? I can't remember what he played. No, Rick Derringer. No, that, no that, that's that's for, for, for free 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 ride. That might be. There was two guitar players in Eggers Band, and, um, and, and but I don't think I never saw I never oh. saw Rick with one of these. 
No. I think Johnny had the uh, he had the monopoly on these. <laughs> Chris Stratty. Designed by a car designer. Was it really? Yeah. But okay, it would make sense. Yeah, it? if you think about it, you think, there, there we've got the two, so you've got yeah. the two fins of the car. Yeah. Oh, I see, as if you yeah. had them on the backs of the, the car. Fin, like, yeah, I see, yeah. 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 How cool is 60s. that? 60s. They don't make... Think 60s. They don't make cars like that anymore, do they? It's quite nice seeing them together, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool. Ooh. Hello. I don't... Yes, hello. Haven't seen you for ages. This one's in great, Nick, this one. It is crazy. And what do you say? This one's 60... This 64, 64 as well. 64. Yeah. yeah. What page is this on there? I don't know. We <laughs> shall find out. But... This is on the uh, this is on the on the CD. Oh, cool! Yeah, it's, it's called. Uh, I think the track's called Johnny. I think. Why not? It's, it's Why a... not? It's my favorite. Honestly, truthfully, I know this sounds like. I'm not a fanboy or anything here, but it's one of the, my favourite things about being in the same with you, same room with you playing guitar, is it doesn't matter what little you know, we've got a relatively affordable little amplifier here, and you pick up guitars and you play licks, and you've just got tone in your fingers. It's just oh uh, well, thank, it's you, just, thank you. It's just it's just it's fun. I wish I could bottle it and sell it. Well, no, it. yeah, <laughs> a, a lot of people would buy it. That is for sure. Um, well, ironically then, we're going to stay in 64. Stay in 64? I, I, everything's drawing me to 64. It was the year my dad opened the store, you see. Oh. And, uh, so I've, had this, I've always had this like special affinity with 64. That's good. But um, I know when I was flicking through this a little bit earlier, one of the guitars that stood out, always been a little of a pet sort of love of mine, is you've got a, an SG Special. Yeah. Um, and well, there's a good story about that, which we will. We'll, well, let's grab that on your lap and tell me the story. Absolutely. Should we put this bird away? Why not? Put okay. this, put this old bird away. <laughs> it's got that roundy thing. Immediately again. I need to buy myself a piano guitar. This one it is quite new. <laughs> new to you. New you to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's in fantastic condition. Isn't it? And um, this was my dream guitar when I was 18. Right. 18 and this is the guitar that I bought, not this particular one, this model. I'd saved up my money. I had a Stratocaster and I just, I always wanted a Gibson guitar. And I saved up my money and I rang up Orange Music. In 1970 and I rang them from I think I borrowed the foreman's you know office phone I was on a working on it for a building company and he was a musician funny enough, nice nice enough fellow and I said can I I need to find out about this guitar and I there was a guy the, the manager was a guy called John Bates and uh, he oh, was a bit memory for names he was a, he was a legend <laughs> really because he was a real nasty piece of work and yet he had a twinkle in his eye you know that kind of thing Anyway, I rang out and said, oh, my name is, my name is Bernard Mills, and, and I would like to buy the SG, please. And it was a hundred and, what was it, 140 quid. Wow. Okay. And I'd sold my Strat for a hundred quid, and I'd saved up 40 quid. And that's all, I, all the money I had in the world. And I'd sold the Strat, and I said, I'll, I'll come up Saturday to get it. 
And when I got there, we were late, you know, because we'd driven up from Buckinghamshire. And, and you know, in, even in those, day, those days, you, you could park outside, yeah. the, but it was still busy in London. You know, it was like going to a different world. And we got, instead of, instead of being there at, say, one o'clock, we got there like 20 to two or something. And this John Bates, I'll never forget his face, big grin on his face going, you're late. I said, Sold. So I went, oh, yeah, really. And he went, yeah, really. Oh, and it, it, he had sold, it sold the guitar because I wasn't there on time. That was what Orange was like. They were like bang, bang, bang. You know, guys, guitars came in at two o'clock and they were sold at 20 past two, you know, stuff like that. And I must have been looking so pathetic because I had a gig that night and I've got no and guitar. Sold strap, I've sold yeah. the strap, right? It's gone. And I, he said, what are you going to do then? I said, oh, what, what, how can you sell yeah. the guitar? He said, well, don't, no good talking about that. He said, it's gone. He said, I've got another one. So right. I've got another. I've got another Gibson. It's not on show, he said. And that was my Les Paul SG that you played before, yes. the one that's in here. And the one you lent to the Gary one that, or, the and one then that I never got back from I years. Well, he wanted it for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I said, How? that was when he broke, you know, he broke the Peter Green guitar. And uh, he had it for two years. And uh, if anybody has a picture of Gary Moore playing a, an SG with Coliseum, please, please send it to me or let me know <laughs> so I took that guitar and that was my first Les Paul so I never did get an SG that was, special in 1970 yeah, right and that so that was a two humbucker Les Paul yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, SG so when it came down I, I, I said he said but this one's 175 pound and I didn't have any money yeah and it's <laughs> and I got a couple of mates and I sat, uh, a couple of pals with me and one of them said well I'll buy your Hofner I had a spare guitar was my yeah. Hofner Colorama, which was my first electric guitar. Yeah. And I sold that on the day, I think, for 10 or 15 quid. And the, this guy who was with me, sadly got passed away now. He said, I'll loan you a fiver. <laughs> you, see, you, can, you can borrow a fiver from me kind of thing. And um, it's about, you've got to pay me back tonight from your gig money. You know, and I said, yeah, that's all right, I can do that. So I scraped together 165, and this guy Bates was Wouldn't unmovable, it? unmovable. And I, all, I, I must have almost, you know, teared up. And in the end, he went, oh, well, you've come a long way, he said, but you're not having a case with it, he said. <laughs> and he put it in a bag. And I was out of there. But, but of course, I went and I realised then, hang on, it's got the wrong pickups on, you know, and everything. And I was there. And of course, I'd, I'd, got the, I'd got the more got superior the, guitar. Yeah, the, the one up or the and, better and it's, one. You know, and I still have that guitar. And uh, yeah. I know well, exactly yeah, we, the date. We played that, didn't we? Yeah, the, you on did the very it first time. one. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. And... Uh, so this is finally after all these years. This came to me about two or three years ago. Right. I saw it in a in a shop. The, the, these marks on it. Um, I was going to ask you if you knew because they're unusual. Like someone's dropped a bit of acid or yeah, something. Yeah. Uh, the con the uh, people who kind of know about these things say it, it's a flaw in the original right. finish. I bet you there's some so crazy microscopic there. picture of it on here somewhere, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, a yeah, there. yeah. 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 <laughs> Look at that. There it is. Live. I love this guitar. And See, look, actually, you can this see gives it. you some idea of how big the book is. Look. Oh, it's huge. It's like life-size <laughs> pictures. Aren't it? You can still get uh, yeah. specials and juniors, though, for semi-sensible money, yeah. can't you? Yeah, the, I mean, these, I mean, in this condition, that, the, you know, the mm. other reason for this is, you know, it, this is the guitar that I wanted when I was for a sure. kid. So yeah, this is a bit of self-indulgence, really. Mm. But you just heard what it's like. So I've used it a few mm. times. I'm, I take, take, I take the occasion of one of these I'll, out on their own now. I always think if you... If you if you fancy getting into guitar collecting, vintage guitar collecting, it start here. You, yeah, and you haven't, you know, you, I mean, yeah. it's not, but you, two or three thousand, three thousand quid rather than twenty-five thousand quid. Yeah, you can get the single pickup versions of these again yeah. in, in t tidy as well. Yeah, really, tidy and, we, and especially the very first ones, which mm. th which they put Les Paul on the, the first ones, which they shouldn't have done. Take my and name he, off he, that. Take my name off that thing, that pointy <laughs> thing. But uh, SG, a eh? solid guitar. That's pretty good, clever, wasn't it's it? It's great, man. Yeah, but um, this is in really good shape. It is. It's super nick, that one. Yeah, isn't it? it's got a bit of dust on it. But, That's uh, great. Well, this was a uh, a nice. Um, this came through the post delivery, wasn't it? We we <laughs> knock at the door <laughs> whilst just about ten minutes after we arrived. Bloody big envelope. Here you are, Mr. Yeah. Marsden. Um, Fresh from. Gibson. Does it seem weird to you that it's 60 years old now, 60 years since the 59? I mean, does it, um, does it make, because, you know, you, you're sort of... Uh, I'm in the middle of it, aren't I, really? Yeah, does it, does it you know, I know you won't necessarily 
like go, oh yeah, I actually remember when the 59 came out. But you, you know, well, I'm, I'm not quite that old. Not enough. quite. No. Um, <laughs> but I do remember the first time I was made aware of them, and, yeah. and you know, I wasn't that old. I'd probably be 18 or yeah. 17 or 18. And a, a, a guy insisted on, he thought they were French guitars and called them the Le the Paul. The Les Paul. <laughs> and uh, I said, no, I think they're Gibson. I think you'll find they're American. No, no, it's a, a Les Paul, you know, which kind of made sense if you think about it, if you didn't know who Les Paul was. Um, they're doing good stuff at Gibson again. And uh, about three weeks ago, I met the new owners. Yeah. And we got into some conversation and... They're very, very caring. They very much want to put Gibson back into the position that we all that we all want Gibson mm. in after the uh, the years of them not being in the well the position that they ended up in. You know, <laughs> well danced around, but we yeah. know what you mean. <laughs> but but th these these new guys, you know, Cesar and and and, and uh, JC, they really care. Yeah, and. We got talking and we talked about the beast and we talked about a few things and um, here I am with a, a 59, 60th year model of the guitar. What do you, that, what do you think? Did about? my guitar look like this when it came out? Well, not this is this is a Maybe darker, a darker one, one. This is yeah. a darker one, but uh, I mean it's it's strange, isn't it? I mean I've seen guitars, original guitars in this kind of condition, and when you see them in this condition, 60 yeah. years old, you can't believe they're real. So it's cat, you know, you just mm. swings and roundabouts really. So you, when did you? So what was the first Les Paul that you fell in love with? Was 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 it the Beast or were there were there Les Pauls before then? No, I I got into the the Freddie King thing through mm. through being, being aware of Eric Clapton. I didn't I realised that Eric Clapton had this great guitar. And Jeff Beck sometimes overlooked Les Paul wise, you know. And I saw him and I played it, opened a show for him when I was about seventeen, and he had his Les Paul then cranked up with a with a big Marshall. And that was, you know, that stays with you. And uh, and then you started seeing, you know, pictures in magazines of Melody Maker and stuff. And they say, oh, he's using one. Oh, oh he uses one. And, and then Jimmy Page was, yeah. and, oh, he's using it. I said, oh, better check one of these out. And then, of course, they were like 300 pounds. Oh, well, well, that's why these guys are, you know, they're pop stars and stuff. And they got the money, you know. And uh, it was a difficult thing to find one, you know, if you could afford one. I, the first one I had was in 72. Two. Right. No, it's not seventy two. Yeah, it was seventy two. Yeah, seventy two. And it was um, a converted gold top. Yeah. I didn't know that at the time, but it, but it was somebody, but it did have um, purfling round the headstock. Oh, really? Which was most unusual. And then the guy, uh, Jim Singleton, who we talked about in the other, he was in Germany. It was the first time I met him. And he, he's now one of the top, you know, vintage dealers in America. And uh, he still remembers that guitar, and he said, "I've never seen another one with." So that really? was a kind of a unique guitar, anyway. But I got a feeling that might have even been a Dick Knight convert. Yeah, yeah. Because Dick, he was the first one to do the the, the, the conversion. And that was, I guess, because you know people just wanted the bursts, didn't they? And yeah. So they would, you know, they'd strip all the well, gold the, tops and yeah, the, the black Eric ones. Yeah, the Eric thing had kicked in, and Jeff was using one, and you know, yeah. it was like, oh, well, you can't get these anymore. So yeah. this is, you know. He said, well, you can. They made a load in 1967 or 68 and stuff. Yeah. And saying, yeah, but I want an old one, you know. So, well, that'll cost you 350 pounds. Oh, dear. Peter Green, of course, you know. So everybody had the same guitar. So it was all us. Th that next generation was like, well, I want one, you know. And I ended up with, with the SG one because yeah. I, couldn't, I yeah. didn't have the money for one of these. And then I finally did. And the guy found me with, you know, the other one. And he, he kind of stalked me, as we, we've talked about before. But uh, I'm glad he did. But you know, just to, I mean, to to feel this again, just to think that this is what mine must have felt like, yeah. brand new. Is this what kind do you of think's made of it so endearing then? And you know, and, and as a, the Les Paul and the Strat and the, and, and the Telly, well, mm. several guitars, but probably the probably the Les Paul and the Strat maybe more than anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what, what I think it, the Stratocaster and, and the, the Les Paul. What makes it so endearing then? Well, a they sound great, mm. you know. And if you put put one of these in a in a, in a half decent player's hands. With a you know with a good rig, mm. they're going to sound pretty good. They're going to mm. you know if they play it, if they use it right, you know you've got to you've got to mess up badly to get a bad <laughs> sound out of one of these babies. And ah, oh, they they look good, don't they? They look. It's become the iconic guitar I, shape kind of thing. I still think it is. The, I think it's the yeah. best looking guitar. I, I know 
strats and as well have, they've got the curves and you see the like but I, I still think the les paul is the is the prettiest one of the bunch i, th I think the combination you know the combination the way that they were built you know the woods they used and the woods they, they they're using again yeah. now and even after i mean they made uh four years ago with they did the reissue yeah. of the beast in the custom shop which they did a fantastic job on but uh, uh, Caesar was saying, like, see, yeah, but we have different approaches now, and we have different uh, types of plastics and stuff. Yeah, and we could even we could do them even better now, kind of thing. So, who knows? You know, we might there might be some kind of version, you know, that that uh, is is available. Did, did you? I heard a story that there was a reason that all the early Les Pauls were either were solid colours, blacks or golds. And that's because Gibson didn't want Fender to find out that they put the maple top on the guitars because they reckoned that part of the reason the sound was so good was the maple top. And they didn't want anyone to know that that's... Well, I don't know if that's a, a true story or well, just it makes another sense, one of these sort it? of it does make, myths I mean, that... Yeah, I mean, who, who knows in those days, you know, but whoever, I mean, no matter who it was, in 1955 with the gold top yeah. or whatever and then into this and, that, and don't forget that by the 60 this was considered a failure and you've got to tell me i mean yeah. again i i for the life of me cannot visualize this idea of you know people sort of going oh burst is a bit rank in it where's the can you make some more black and gold ones yeah please? but yeah. What, what's you, i mean you, again i know you i know you, it's Ten years later, before you know, by the time you were playing, was it was it like everyone just went, no, the burst is the best looking one, or was there still an element of people well, going, well, no, I, I, I don't like the, I don't like to see the wood, you know? It's like... uh, there was no such thing as a burst until, I think, what the late eighties. Right. They were less, they were less pools, you know, and then you said, oh, I've got a Les Paul standard. Oh, okay. Well, I've got a Les Paul custom, and this the burst thing, and they say, oh, in the sunburst, and you go, yeah. There was a guy called um, Robert Johnson, uh, not not not, not the, the Robert not, Johnson. Not, no, no. Well, he would say he is the Robert <laughs> Johnson. Uh, he played in a, a band with John Entwistle, right. and Entwistle was a great guitar collector. He really knew his right. stuff. John John really knew his stuff. And, but Robert was in his band. He's a guitar player, and he had, uh, I think it's the guitar that's on the front cover of the Beauty of the Burst. Right. And he said to me, we became sort of friends in the 70s you know we're all just knocking around london and he was to us like he was cracking on because he was playing with john Entwistle, you know <coughs> excuse me and he then said to us you know he had he had this rock burst thing yeah and uh he said these are the best guitars in the world and we said well yeah but they're 300 quid you know you know we haven't got that kind of money he said and i remember him using the very word investment you right. know investment grade guitar burn you know and i still see him now well, i saw him only two or three years ago in, in memphis and he's still you know he's still crazily nice uh i don't think he has his guitar anymore or but he, he was a guy who who should be mentioned really yeah. in the les paul because he really and he got a great sound with, 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 I think the band were called The Ox. I think they were called The Ox. Yeah, okay. And uh, he had a great sound, but he would get in the store with his guitar in, in, in Top Gear in Denmark Street, plug into a small amp, and we'd all be going, wow, you know? Like everybody yeah. does. Cause, cause, and you think, oh, well, I see what he means. So then maybe I will tr put a few quid aside and try and get one. And uh, slowly but surely, you know, Mick Taylor, you know, yeah. everybody's, yeah. you know, listen to Mick Taylor on the live Stone stuff, well, and the recorded stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, no, it doesn't get much better than that. And the, the John Mayle, everyone's a Les Paul, and still you think, oh yeah, everything came together in one go, really. Yeah. And um, even though they're all so different from, from Eric to Peter to, to Mick, it's still the same it's guitar. It's got a thing, there's, yeah. a, there's a, I know what yeah. you mean. So I think that that was really what it, what it was, and if you if you had the money, and once you got one, you, you were done, you know. And like like you know, I, I I've had several more since, and you know, but it, none none of them were as good as the Beast. So you know what you know what what did you? I paid four hundred quid for this one, but somebody just offered me eight hundred quid for it. So you sell it, yeah. you know. Thirty years later, they go, oh, he was a real dummy, you know. Well, you know that dummy needed the money at the time. And, yeah. and I still have the other one yeah. because it was a better guitar for me. It might not have been better, I, but for me, I thought, it, you know, when you got them, I had, a, the, I've got a, I could never find this photograph, but I know I've got it uh, in my flat in London. Um, just after I moved away from the Mick Ralph's house, there's a picture of the Beast, Peter's guitar, and 
the, the uh, Keith Richards guitar. I've got a picture of the B stand Peter's guitar uh, and Mick's guitar. You know the the Keith Richards. Yeah. One. But I can't find the one with all three in. But I know I've got it somewhere. That's the thing about finding the negative. You know, it's not going to happen, is it? Though I keep looking. Though. You never know. Well, well yeah. I've got pictures of the uh, other one. I'll show them one day. I'll show you. I think you know, in, in true Lord of the hear Rings, some of this? one ring. To well, okay, no, yeah, okay, cut that yeah. bit out. They just said. So let's let's have a little listen. It does indeed. I, I don't know uh, what Gibson will have to do to prize this out of your hands to try and get it back, but on the off chance that they do, let me just read you out the serial number just in case <laughs> somebody ends up going, oh, I got that. Uh, it is 99009. Is it? Nines. Yeah, there we wow. go. Wow. Oh, and it does in fact say that this is for display only does it? at the NAM show. 2019. So this must have been one of the ones that was. Uh... Oh, no, no wonder this. Make, making sure that you take it away. <laughs> is that the deal? Is it they want me to take it home immediately? That's great, man. Anyway, no, look, come I mean, on. I mean, we're we're we're, we're in deep in um, in conversation. Oh, uh, look, it's, it's... It, which is which is great. You know, it, it's it's a bit like uh, um, finding an old pair of jeans or something, and you know, talking to the guys. They they, they speak the way that you want to hear. A company with the, with the heritage of yeah, of, 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 yeah. well they, they, it's you know. it's for all of the uh, trials and tribulations of, of Gibson over the last you know few years well it's, it's thirty odd years isn't yeah, it? It but uh, I, I I always felt that you know there were always some super super people that worked there and there were always a lot of people trying to do the best I'm, that they could I'm really glad um, and you know it, it's, hindsight is, is, is a great yeah. thing but I'm, I'm really so pleased that I, I managed to visit the original factory in Kalamazoo, right? And, and you know, and cool. do, do the whole tour thing and hang out for a well a day and a half there. Yeah. You know, stay overnight and back the next day, meeting the original workers who yeah. you know put together the, these things and, and yeah. you know, and, and the, the guys that are doing the work now in in, in the new plant, you know, they, I mean, this speaks for itself, yeah. really, doesn't it? It's, I know when I when I met uh, Cesar was the one. I mean, obviously JC has been. You know, he fully understands, you know, that, that they, they, they need to try and change some things to do with how Gibson do business with people and all that kind of stuff. But Cesar was the one that was like, he knew upside down and inside out how the guitars should be made. You know, like, and I'm talking things that I'm sure even the most ardent Gibson collector would sort of go, oh, I didn't know that. You know, no, he, know, like, he knows what he would want from a guitar yeah, and he, yeah. he he just happens to be you know he can do it because it's his yeah. his baby now yeah you know? absolutely but uh that you know I, I, hopefully we're going to be working together well and, you never uh, i mean finding somebody out honestly and, from you you've only got to literally look at the content section of this book to know mm. that uh yeah. you know as as stunning as all the Definitely. guitars are and especially all the paul Reed smith guitars beautiful beautiful guitars yeah. There's there's a theme that runs through this book. Yeah. I guess if um, you was to cut through here, there'd be a G in there somewhere. As well. <laughs> <laughs> but don't do that. No, I won't do that. Well, come on, look. We've kept these good people waiting let's look uh, at, long let's, enough. Let's look at the real thing now. After looking at the proof. Uh, well, yeah. So page. What are we on? Page. Where are we? For, you should know this off by heart. Where is the beast? Do. The beast is well, it's in the middle. So um, no, I don't. I should know where it's at. No. Is this it? 
Page 165, Gibson Les Paul Standard. Oh, it's a bit understated, isn't it? 165, let's see if that's where it is. This is such a beautiful book. This is such a beautiful book. There it yes, is. this is it. With the scars that I know so well. Yeah. Oh, you let me, I don't even know if you remember, but you let me take the poker chip oh, off. Oh, that caused that a sensation, video. didn't it? And it was bright red underneath yeah, it. Yeah. It looked... Still is. Oh. I shan't see this. Oh, there's the picture. Oh, there you, yeah, there you go. He's done it in the picture. Yeah. How cool is that? Now this will, I'm going to just check this bit out here, right? In a minute, I'll show you something that's going right. to blow, well, come you, on blow then. you away. Let's, let's do this. Every guitar player is going to be so jealous. Who's seen inside a Les Paul before? You're going to be so jealous. <laughs> um, but you're very generous with the beast, aren't you? In the sense of, you know, there's a few, yeah. you know, once people get to know uh, you a bit, I liked you're, you're quite sort of like, yeah. Ar Ariel, Ariel Posner played, played it recently. Yeah. Uh, Jared Nichols. Uh, they, lovely, lovely guy. Uh, Jer Jared, he opened the case and, and, and smelled it for about 30 seconds. <laughs> it was the most odd 30 seconds I think I've ever seen with it. But, uh, oh, you've, it. And it you've, given the, you've given the beast like an extra few pages, haven't you, as it deserves? Yeah. yeah. So come on, let's have a look because the other exciting let's get thing to about tales the beast of tone and volume. is there's a you've got a little bit more on the providence of it, haven't you? As I well, have, yeah, since, have, yeah. since the last time yeah. I saw you. amazing <laughs> oh man i was just you pick that guitar up and it's literally like you uh it's like your old friend it's like your your partner in yeah. crime or your yeah, it's, it, it's my, like um it's my mate really it's a different relationship yeah and yeah. i think uh yeah I, I wonder if every every guitar player could, you know i wonder so, I, I can't remember who it was said to me i think it was a Somebody said to me that you you don't find a guitar, it finds you sort yeah. of thing. And, yeah, and I go along with that. Definitely that one is yeah, your the sort guy, of guitar I mean, soulmate. The, as I, you know, we've talked about before, but the guy came to see me with Wild Turkey in, in the marquee it was. And um, he just saw me play. And then a couple of weeks later, we were back there. And, and uh, well, I think we did a residency there the following week. And he just came in and said, I've got a guitar, I think. Well, he said the guitar, this guitar will be great for you. 
I'd never seen it before. I never knew it was for sale or anything. Well, we, and then I found out I couldn't afford it. So. Yeah, so the very first time I ever came up here, which uh, was a, a brilliant day and you were very kind and we, 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 <laughs> we messed took around it apart, with this guitar. Didn't we? Yeah. But you weren't sure of the... There were rumours and bits and bobs about perhaps what the, the history of the guitar had been prior mm. to you owning it. Mm. But you've filled in some gaps since Well, then. only recently I got a call. I mean, I bought it from a guy. Um, his, his name was, was Martin Henderson. He was a good friend of Andy Fraser's. Andy Fraser got the, he bought it from Andy Fraser. I, he bought it from Paul Kossoff. Called Paul Kossoff had traded this, these are Martin's words to yeah. me at the time, uh, with, with, with Eric, uh, I think for a black Les Paul or something, something like before that. So that was as, as way back as, as I'd gone, gone yeah. with it without, without, you know, EC kind of picking it up and going, yeah, you know, whatever, because you know, kind of yeah. thing, you know, whatever. Maybe, hopefully, one of these days we'll get a chance to let him have a look at it. <clears throat> but uh, only recently, I got a, a, an email from a, a guy, a guy called Gordon, uh, who used to work in Top Gear, and he also worked in Guitar Village and Sound City in the '60s, and he filled in quite a few pieces. And apparently, this guitar belonged to a guy called Jimmy Nolan. Yeah. Who was around? We talked earlier of the this this fellow David Roberts. Yeah, and Jimmy is from that era, from the sixties era, and he worked with this guy Gordon, who worked at Top Gear. That's when I knew him, <clears throat> and he informed him that um, he sold this guitar to Eric, and it was his guitar, and he had it from New because he worked at Selmer's. And and you think that you've got a black and white picture of Eric with a Les Paul that you. I've got, well, I can show you now. Yeah, let's, I mean, ha let's have a little look. So if that's the case, this is a picture I've had of the cream for many, many years. And if, if that's the case, uh, and Jimmy told Gordon that, that he, he sold this guitar in early 66, uh, or in 66, which is after they recorded the Beano album. So that's when Eric's guitar got stolen. Yeah. So I, I've always believed this, if it, you know, if it was what it was, was what it is. Yeah, uh, it's a cream guitar, and nothing. You know, I've never had any, you know, thoughts about it being them because the blues breaker guitar was a sixty anyway. Right. But if that's the case, this is probably this is probably the guitar. It's amazing. This, this one, this one I mean, only he will know, you know, or he, you know. I mean, I've we said before. Jack Bruce said hello, old friend, when he saw it, and Jeff Beck the first time. And I think I hadn't had it very long when I first, when Jeff first saw this. And Jeff took it out, well, I got it out of the case for Jeff to play, you know, sitting there like a shivering wreck I was. And uh, it, before he sort of played it, he looked at it and said, he just said nonchalantly, oh, was this Eric's? And, you know, there you go. So who knows? But only in the last two weeks has that email come through from this fellow Gordon who, who worked to at Top Gear. Back, yeah, yeah. This, this fellow's name was Jimmy Nolan. And uh, I remember the name Jimmy Nolan, but I, I, I think it's before my time as a... He was one of the Nolan yeah, sisters. Yeah, yeah, maybe definitely. the Nolan father, yeah, something like that. <laughs> But if it's true, you know, that, that fills in the background pre, you know, pre, where, 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 well, it shows you where Eric got it from. Yeah, know? I mean, yeah. that would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. But, but, but fill, in, fill in a blank, wouldn't that be amazing if, he, you know, if at some point yeah. over the next year or two, he would, he would just go, yeah, you know, yeah. That's, that's the, that it's is the one. one. Yeah, it's the one, yeah. It's still doing it. And where, where's it been recently? Ariel posner has been playing it. Yeah. Jared Nichols, uh, Warren, and uh, I'm doing a show with uh, Ginger Baker in... April. Oh yeah, you were rehearsing in, in Brighton, for that, weren't yeah. you? Um, uh, we're, we're getting the bit together now. I, I, what's that? I about? might well take this down there. Then. It, so is he? It's, is a, he, it's a, an he, evening of drums with Herman Rarebell and Pete York right. and Ginger. And but is, asked, he, is he how they? You know, is he the, the, the sort of the firebrand that he's portrayed to I be? Don't know about firebrand, but you know, he's, he's you know he's. We've been working in the studio together. We've been recording some old cream stuff, right? Uh, acoustically, I mean, that's another story. And he's been, um, well, you know, Ginger's Ginger, you know, and as long as you deal with that, that's fine. But when, he, the, when, when the man gets behind the drum kit, it's Ginger Baker. Yeah. You know, he may not be able to play for as long as he used to and stuff, but you know, you know, he's getting, you know, he's, he's getting on in years, and he, he knows what he can do. And uh, I'm going to be doing Sunshine of Your Love. White Room and uh, maybe one other, you know. So that'll Fantastic. be my that'll be my contribution to the show, and uh, 
I'm not doing that many shows in the UK this year, but that's that's one of that's April the twelfth, I think. April the twelfth. Oh, well, so it's not that far away. I mean, I, I get. I'd hope this is just part three of maybe a longer series of videos <laughs> we do because there's so much. I mean, that we, we'll let's go and look at the book because okay. the, the, the you know you've got such a beautiful yeah. collection of guitars. Well, this um, is uh, this is the star of the book. In uh, there's the Beast edition, and it's the you know it's the central part of all three editions anyway. So so. Uh, here are here it is. Yeah, I mean, we, the one I had here on my are. lap. What you called that? Um, that was like a, just a proof. That was copy. The, that right? was the binding. The binding. Proof. The binders proof copy for, but, for me too. To but, look through. But when you when you get one, uh, should you wish, you get a, a choice of like quite pretty yeah. looking things. So what? Yeah. Should we? Do you want it? Why don't we start Should with we start with the all singing, all dancing? This is, this is presumably the most expensive way to yeah. own the book. This is this is the ultimate. So. What a beautiful presentation case. And they've done this. Company. This is proper yeah, this 3D, is from, like this involved is from isn't it? the guitar as well. So. Yeah. So. Oh, you mean? Of course, these are the yeah. actual scratches yeah. by the volume controls, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How cool yeah. is that? And on the back, oh, it's so heavy. On the back, oh, so beautiful. And we thought we'd do this in the old-fashioned. Yeah, way. like the inside of the Gibson case. And then it? it comes with this. I can never get anything out of here. It's so nicely done. So I had this old case, and what we did was we cut it up, and everybody gets a piece of it. And this is in the limited edition. Uh, and this is like a keepsake kind yeah, of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the guy who bought the first one, um, uh, he got the uh, the guitar handle, and, and I thought that was fair enough. Yeah. 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 So there's that one, and uh, this has got um, the Beast edition comes with. Oh wow! There's more. There's the long yeah, yeah, it comes with the CD, and there's four prints of. Of the guitar, but uh, that, there's that was one there, and and these oh, plus geez. plus one other. I mean, the prints are spectacular, yeah. aren't they? Um, they are, and you can order these prints as well. Cut. I think. Uh, I think. I think if, oh, if, cool. if, if you like page 106, yeah, yeah. You, you can order one upset, and I'll sign them up. And you know, oh man, get, they're, get, they're, get they're such back. beautiful, beautiful books. So that's the that's so, like the collector's so this is, edition. This is, yeah. This, so this is you... the Tales of Tone and Volume. So here it is with with my name on it. It's so, is, which is marvelous. It's so pretty. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the one in the sort of the presentation set. Yep. And then you've got another really nice one here. This is the, the this is the mid edition. mid series one. Oh, the I'll just just show you the back of this. Oh yeah, you were going to do that. Weren't so you? this has got the same where as the back of the guitar. It's great. And you can you can feel yeah, it. It's yeah, it's such a great idea. Yeah. Very clever. Yeah. Um, so this this one is this, this, this the is guitarist not, as in the magazine or just no, as in for people who are guitarists? This is just the guitarist edition in, in the middle. So, so it's the same book, same just book, a, a different presentation case. Different, different, different. It's got the PRS on the front. Got my PRS on the front. This one, although, oh, although right. it, it looks quite similar to the other one. Yeah, I, I didn't even notice yeah. that at first. Yeah. So it's got a different front cover. I see different front cover, and but the rest of it is the same. And this comes with a, a set of prints and a piece of the case as well. There you go. And, oh, this a different got, bit of the case. and this has got four prints from the book, and I'm, I'm not sure. I think they're kind of at random. And a CD. And the CD uh, is complete. It's not on general release. It's only no, for it's people only, who at the moment. Get it's, the it's only only with how many tracks are on there? I think ten or eleven. Ten or eleven. That's a yeah. proper album. Yeah. yeah. Now this one is so. This one's. I'm not sure. These, these are limited edition, right? Uh, of a hundred, which I think half of. Sort of more or less gone of each. Maybe nice. some. Are, I think this one's gone a bit. This one's, and we've only been running since, uh, well, January really. Yeah. Well, we I'll, launched at the middle of December. Of December. Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll put links underneath. This and this video. one, I yeah. launched. I launched at the. We launched the book at Selfridges. A friend of mine is a very high roller at Selfridges, so we thought as a as a thank you to her, we'd do a very limited edition, and That's on this lovely. one. Oh, you've got the, the... We've got the blue... The blue one, the, the faded denim. The yeah. faded denim one on there. Same deal. Um, limited edition prints. Piece of the case. But this one, ironically, is, is becoming... Um, well, not becoming. has become the most rare one because we only did a very limited edition for Selfridges. I think this would be... So if, if your other yeah. half 
yeah. says, I need to go to Selfridges yeah. to spend yeah. £2,000 on a handbag. Yeah. Well, well, that's yeah. fair enough. But as long okay. as we come away with one of these as well, then yeah. it's a fair deal. But you can only get these online now. Oh, okay. The Selfridges uh, promotion has, has finished. So you can get these from BurnleyMarsden.com or from RufusPublications.com. Rufus Publications. And this um, one is the this is the standard edition. This will be the, the one that presumably continues in print, will it? Yeah, this one this one is unlimited. Yeah. But oh, this is one I used at Sky News. There you go. <laughs> Comes with a CD. Same deal. Yeah. Uh, this is what I think they call a coffee table book. Uh, I don't like that term very much, but there you go. But it's all the same. But well, this is the one you can leaf through rather than do a weightlifting course. It's, uh, you know what, they're both beautiful books, but and there's something just... about them when the photos are this size. Yeah. That d yeah. it's. Um, it's a nice little thing at the end. With, um, oh, oh, like the, honestly, Ringo, it's so. like a massive clang, just Ringo Starr bookmark in there. It's like, you know, just... <laughs> That's the one I used when I played with him. <laughs> That's the one I used with a little help from my friends, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this was for Sky News, you see. Here's the Amazing. So this is uh, another Sid Paul. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's, 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 that's the most recent one. And then there, I've got a few amps. We didn't talk amps. about the amps. You've yeah, just, 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 just back, a few amps. You? you know, that's my first Selma amp. Little giant. Which, which the guy who I played with when I was, like, I don't know, 14 or something, he said, you did gigs with this amp. I still can't believe it because it's, it's, it's a radio. But he said, no, you can have it. And he gave it me back when, I don't know, about 20 years ago. Amazing. And he said, no, you use this on gigs. I can remember it. I like the way they put the... It's, the it's, it's, it's been well thought out. Yeah, it's a really, really pretty it's book. Blue Fender. Um, mm -hmm. there's the, Old this champ, is the, yeah. That's the champ I used Got to use, the white snake. With, um, Did you? Yeah, we used it for the voice box. R oh, right. So all that huge PA system going on, and my voice was coming through this. And that's why that's all cut Look down at the, at the Yeah, I know. <laughs> How dare you? Accusing of <clears throat> Nice old Gibson amp from the 50s. Oh, cool. And, and a very rare Marshall. Oh, yeah, that uh, the does Marshall look Capri. cool. Oh, I like that a yeah. lot. They, they were made for mail order, so there's no Marshall on the badge anywhere. Right. It's so obviously, obviously it's not Marshall. Marshall. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they, they, they haven't even got one of these in the museum, so no, they may be pressuring me on that. Are you, so that's here somewhere, or in the yeah, that's here. Somewhere. Yeah, that's here. Yeah, we can have a quick look at that if you want. I keep forgetting. No, I'm, I'm looking through this book, thinking it's like a, just a, a like a load of dream things that you would love to own, but you actually do all, obviously. And this is the, this is the evolution of my PRS signature. Oh, yeah. So it went from this one with the red headstock, and yeah, and that's the last edition. And, and I believe that you're involved with the last edition. Well, we, we uh, I don't know by the time this video uh, comes out, but you well, might you want have to dive left. on over to Anderson's and see what there is. But yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I signed them all up, didn't I? You did. Yeah, you're very kind of you to do that. This, I love this one, the spalted one they did. That was that was. Anybody who's got one of those, because there won't be any more now. Yeah. So. Well, there's your mate. There's my mate. Uh, so there you go. This is. You know, this is a. I'm very proud of this book. I bet and, you are. Uh, the people that have been involved working on it, and you know, have done done a really good. Well, you can see it's there's a lot of care and love gone into yes. it. And, uh, yes, and I hope it's they, taken a uh, while, but I think it's worth it. I don't think there's really anything out there like it. Is, is there? You've seen a lot of books. Well, I was saying to you before, isn't it? You know, Beauty yeah. of the Burst is is yeah. obviously probably the best known yeah. uh, book with pretty pictures or, of guitars. Or as my them. darling daughter said, who signed the uh, acoustic guitar, yeah, yeah, she yeah. said, "But Dad, the pictures." Are the same on every page. <laughs> well, I was going to say this. This is like this is like Beauty of the Burst level up. Yeah, you know, it's like the next level up. I mean, those guitars. In, you know, the, you turn a page of you know, the guitar that's worth a hell of a lot of money. Mm. Get, and the, the next one is a hundred and fifty quid uh, Squire Stratocaster. These these are the guitars I've mm. used in the studio and on the road in the last forty years. I don't think you have to be a particular. You know? Um, it's not. It's not necessarily just about being a Bernie Marsden fan. This is just for people that are I fans think, yeah. of guitar. If you like that, books, you know, yeah. if you like books and pretty yeah. pictures, and of if guitars. you like collectible books that are going to um, fill up your shelf. Yes. Yeah. Well, well done, sir. Thanks, man. Thank, Thank you very much. See you all. Thank we'll you do guys. it again this time next year. Thank you, chaps. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take Cheers it easy. Watching. Bye, guys.